Welcome to our Ajax introduction lesson. So this lesson, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Ajax is and how you can use it within JavaScript. So Ajax is short for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And I know you're probably saying, okay, hold on a minute. We've just been looking at JSON and JSON is the format for transferring data. So it's more popular than XML, but originally when Ajax was first conceived, then they were using XML. So that's why there's the difference there. And that's why XML has kind of just stayed within this acronym, but most of the time we're not using XML anymore. We're using JSON. So why use Ajax? It gives you the ability not to have to refresh your page. You can request and receive external data from the server and you can send data to the server. So typically when a website, when a user visits a website, they wait for the server to respond and load the data. But this is not the case with Ajax because when you go to a website, the website now has an option using Ajax to connect to a server and load even more data that's not initially present on the web page when you first get there. So there are a number of players involved in Ajax because Ajax is a set of technologies, it's not just one. And first and foremost, of course, is JavaScript. So this is front end scripting language. It basically provides functionality on your web pages. And commonly we use it with Ajax where we've got an event listener and that event listener triggers the connection the Ajax connection, so we get additional data, and JavaScript also provides that data handling. And then finally, there's the element manipulation where JavaScript takes that brand new data and does something, outputs it to the user, and does something with that data that it's retrieved back during the Ajax request, the HTTP request. Next is the DOM, so document object model. So this is the part that gets built by your browser and it goes through all of your HTML page and it builds out what's called the document object model. So essentially it's a giant object. Uh, it's in a tree structure format. So it starts at the very top and it has a number of branches there. So they've got a parent, child, and that child might have children and so on and so on and so on. And this is all rendered out from the HTML. And this is also what gives us the ability to update that current DOM object without actually affecting the files that were coming from the server. So we're updating it on the fly and only for that one instance of the user while they're interacting with it. And that's what makes it perfect with Ajax because once you get that content back, if you wanna update a certain element with some additional brand new content that you've just retrieved back from the server, you can really easily do that using JavaScript, connecting into the DOM. And then of course there's CSS. So CSS is how we present our markup and also JavaScript can interact with the CSS and also maybe do something with CSS when it gets particular data back from the server. And it's also very, very core of it is always going to be JavaScript. So JavaScript is also what initiates that XHR object. So that's the XML HTTP request. And this is what allows us to connect to those server APIs, transfer that data between the web browser and the web server. And then of course we need a server. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a server server, but there does need to be something in order to receive that request and send some additional information back. So to sit there and get that data and then send a response. And usually typically it is servers and server side languages that handle this. Uh, you could connect to databases, apply logic, and this is all done in the server side on the back end, and we only see the results with the Ajax request. So it's limitless what you can do with the Ajax request. It just initiates and triggers all of the other things to happen and outputs that HTTP request for Ajax as well. And then lastly, there's JSON. So we've already looked at this and we know that JSON is a file format. It's human readable, it's easy to transmit, and it consists of those key pair values that we saw earlier. So Ajax, it's not a programming language. And as we saw, it's a group of technologies and it's a combination of these technologies with the browser and JavaScript that make things happen. And Ajax, allows you to send and retrieve data asynchronously to the server. So that means that it doesn't interfere with the display or the behavior of the existing page, it just runs in the background getting that data. And it's the JavaScript that's at the very heart of it. So JavaScript is used to send the request, it receives that information, and it also modifies the content that the user is interacting with. 
This is a model of how Ajax works. So there we've got the web browser, so the user interface. So there's that HTTP traffic that gets sent to the server. The server does something with that and then sends it back. And then the JavaScript or the Ajax engine picks it up and does whatever it's supposed to do from the programming point of view with Ajax. So a typical XHR request, and we are gonna be showing you these in more detail coming up. Uh, so this is a typical request. So we initialize the HTTP request. Uh, we open the page where, where the page that we're requesting, and then we send that information. And in the middle here, we'd actually listen for the ready state. And the ready state changes depending on where you are in the steps of retrieving data. So ready state four means that the request is completed. Status is 200 means that you've successfully connected with the server and you retrieve data back. And you know that at this point, you're ready to output that content. If something went wrong, we can also catch those errors. And the good thing about the XHR, it's been around for a long time now, and it's got very good cross-browser support. So generally you won't have any problems working across browsers. So fetch is another way to make your Ajax connections. And this is JavaScript, so just plain old JavaScript. And it's actually not old, it's uh, brand new with uh, ES5. So it's relatively new and it uses promises, well, pr options, and you can have multiple promises there. And you could also catch if there's any errors. And we'll be showing you how to use this coming up as well. And keeping in mind that this currently doesn't work across Internet Explorer and Safari. So it's not ideal if you're working Ajax call to work across browsers. What happens within an Ajax request? So the user is interacting with the browser and they trigger something within the JavaScript that sends that HTTP request. The server is over here. It receives that request. It processes it, that request, and it returns a response. So that's it returning the response. And then the browser receives that response, processes it, and updates something within the web page. So that's Ajax for you. And to summarize it, essentially there's eight steps. There's the data collection on the website, and then usually it's uh, some type of trigger that starts the Ajax process. The XML HTTP request object is then created within the code. The XHR is sent to the server. The data is received by the server. Server issues a response. The web page receives the response back, updates the code using the data that's been retrieved from the server, and then provides a visual output for the user to digest. So the next lesson, we're jumping right in and we're gonna start creating some Ajax.